From the southernmost point of Dorne to the lands of always winter, and what is west of Westeros and the shadows in the east, we are in Westeros today. This is Casterly Talk. We're back, my friends. We are back. Episode 174 in an ongoing series. A podcast that looks at the world of ice and fire. Occasionally we look over there at the wonderful Lord of the Rings world, the Tolkien world, the Rings of Power world, all those worlds. And, of course, Willow. And we might not be done talking about Willow. I believe we'll get a second season at some point. We'll find a way. Maybe we'll just... Maybe we'll just get Kazdan to give us the scripts here. We'll we'll talk about it. Someone who knows a lot about Willow's on the show with me here tonight as we talk about Game of Thrones universe expanding. Alden Diaz is back. Uh, I say back. Really, I'm the one who's back. You held down the fort during the Willow days in the last couple episodes uh, with me here. How are you, buddy? I'm doing well. I'm on board with your idea of just doing Willow season two, three live reads. They yeah. could spend way less money pay us you know we're, we're we'd love to we could just hang out and do multiple characters that'd be great be great um, top yeah. quality <laughs> they have a great time we, we, we can act uh and, but i've been doing well so lovely to see you across the pond yeah. should say that oh, too that yeah. we are coming off of a, a star wars celebration which is uh mm. one of those other fantasy things big um, one yeah you know small and indie property um that was a lot of fun getting to hang out you all of our friends um getting to meet a lot of our friends for the first time and sharing all that and it both rejuvenated us and exhausted us <laughs> yeah yeah i feel creatively just on fire uh physically i'm burning but not in a good way just mm -hmm. coming back uh i spent some time in paris after the trip and uh yeah it's 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 the physical recovery and then the emotional recovery of getting back to normal life but um you know we're here we're here we're here we are here and there's maybe even a couple times while in london news mm -hmm. would break that we're going to talk about tonight and we'd be like oh, we're gonna talk about that when we get home we're gonna talk about that when we get home so yeah very excited this is truly a uh catch-up episode and some of the news uh, in the world of ice and fire that we've uh, missed, uh, just haven't had a chance to talk to. And, and what's funny, too, I always feel like we have to apologize to our Casterly Talk listeners. Uh, you know, basically, you know, Ranger Donald and Eric Monroe and some of the uh, uh, Tamor and some of the regulars here. But you and I actually, a couple weeks ago before London, we were like an hour away from getting down to record. And we mm -hmm. both had things come up where we had yep. to step away. Yep. Yeah. It, it, thankfully, the chaos in our lives did sync up that yeah. day um but yeah we we had to delay it um i've had a project that i want to do here that's gotten delayed a few times and then i was like you know what after celebration after celebration um but we're happy to be here you know we're never not going to do this because it's yeah. the thing that um we love most is, is talking about these worlds and and being able to unpack it and this is like therapeutic for us and um you know we've made no secrets about the fact that it's kind of Kind of unfortunate that we don't get any of the shows this year, mm -hmm. um, but they're trying. They did that post about we're in principal photography on season two. So that's right. Let's talk about season two House of the Dragon. Uh, they are starting to shoot at exciting stuff. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm going to start doing even a rewatch on that show. I've just kind of because season two is so far away. I think I emotionally separate myself from season one too of just like I, i'll go back to it when it's closer uh but uh, closer it might be you know around the corner summer 2024 is possibly when season two comes on out and this news broke uh, over the last couple of weeks we want to catch up on here alden deadline announcing among other spots that season two the house of the dragon will reportedly run and as always i want to shout out the fine folks at watchers on the a great uh, game of thrones news source to kind of pull in all the stuff and get some commentary on it. We're part of a larger ecosystem of the fandom, so uh, I love going over to them, so shout out to them. And they were just saying over there, uh, the, is season two will reportedly run only eight episodes rather than the standard 10, though, you know, last two seasons of Game of Thrones, a little different there. Uh, and this uh, this is uh, part of, I don't know, how would you describe it, Alden? Uh, an ongoing planning this, negotiating for season three's renewal, or, or yeah. all the, there's a lot at stake here, a lot going on. It's really weird because, you know, doing the different lengths, it's not unheard of. This is this happens in all kinds of shows of different sort of formats and everything. Like even we were talking earlier about Star Wars Rebels. The final season is a little bit shorter and then yeah. one and two. And it's not, you know, like you said, Game of Thrones. It, it has happened. So that doesn't give me pause. What's weird is 
it's no secret that Warner, HBO, that whole situation is chaotic, um, cutting films and shows for tax write-offs, and now the consolidation of HBO Max and Discovery into just Max. Max. Which is, it's not purple anymore, it's blue, and it's just Max, which is you know just a, a comment that many people have made this is not an original joke yeah. but it's like yeah that's the part of the name that screamed the quality that's the mm -hmm. part you keep mm -hmm. uh yeah. is the max yeah. part not the hbo not the hbo um, pedigree going back to ages sopranos a lot of people say but for me dream on brian ben ben like prestige yeah, like wasn't that, like it got wasn't oz on hbo or mm -hmm. like you had sex in the city like it's like got a, a lineage of iconic shows but nope it's max now um max. so that's fine, I guess. So yeah. in all of that, it appears that they maybe are not nervous, maybe trepidatious about, mm. are we going to do it in three? Are we going to do it in four? That's the, that's part of it. How long is yeah. it going to take to tell the story of the dance? And then to get three locked down soon, maybe so they can just roll right into into three. I don't know if that's part of it. We don't know. We don't work there. But <laughs> they are going to shorten this one to guarantee that they get the cash for the next one is weird. And, you know, I was talking to someone, you know, very well, uh, Grace Hancock, who was saying, mm -hmm. how is this not a foregone conclusion? You know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. how is that game of Thrones is the thing that you feel nervous about? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and season one of house of the dragon, I, I think the numbers were there, but yeah, it, it's a weird time. And, and that's the thing is not knowing, as I always say, we're not in these meetings and, and, and not knowing, the, the facts and not wanting to speculate on 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 rumors though deadline is is, is reporting it so we can we can deal with it uh, it's a gut reaction thing for me and and when i first mm -hmm. heard the story i had a little bit of that dark clouds forming like oh no is it, are they are they losing confidence in the show is there something going on or is, you know you just kind of your mind can wander with that but you know a lot right. of it reading into it was this idea of like it's not necessarily just budget it's a very expensive show no, we just feel this is all the story needs. We don't want to stretch it out. So I like hearing that. You can get conspiracy theory and be like, well, is that really what's going on? And that's only because I think there's not a lot of confidence in Max overall with what's going on. You mentioned yeah. it uh, before. So that's just where my heart goes. Of like, I got a little scared. But then I kind of read into it. And, and you know, if it's going to be eight and they feel they can tell the whole dance in three seasons, you know, I got to, what are we going to do? Beg them to go five? Yeah. Creatively if you want to do it in that amount of time i'd rather you do that than feel mm -hmm. like there, there's a great history of in film and television of you know we only wanted to do this and we and we decided to stretch or we decided to even cut so i either way just go where you're comfortable now not to skip news stories and we'll get into it when we get into it the announcement of duncan egg which we will talk about as officially mm -hmm. moving forward with the longest title um is <laughs> It, that does sort of soothe, I think, some of these worries because Condal's a producer on that. It went, got the straight to series. So it feels like Westeros, we're still solid in the max landscape. Um, yeah. But this mm -hmm. choice, maybe it's just, yeah, maybe it's a, um, a House of the Dragon specific thing um, in terms of where they, they want to go with this. It could also be cast. I mean, this is, you've got, yeah. Your two stars here of Olivia Cook and, and Emma Darcy are on the rise and very in demand. And who knows what this is? Who there's so many different factors, but yeah. And it's why we focus on what is actually there, right? We always mm -hmm. talk about we're, we're here to engage with with the art, we're engaged engage with the show, but it doesn't mean you don't get lost in some of the 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 rumors or the news every now and then. And 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 it's it's different than the Star Wars world for me. I just kind of I, I have a little more patience for these shows. I, mean, I wish House of Dragon was here this year. But yeah, uh, yeah so I, I'm with you. I just kind of uh, I you can only take it as it uh as it lay, so to speak, uh, and just see, see where it goes. And 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 if eight is enough, which was a great show in the 70s that I used to watch, is <laughs> if it is enough. Uh, it's enough. Yeah. And then on the note of eight specifically, business aside, I really don't care. Um, I, <laughs> I love the Mandalorian. Those are all eight. Book eight. of Boba Fett was seven. Uh, yeah. Breaking Bad was, I think it ended with 13. Daredevil was 13. I'm yeah. very much of the mind of tell it how you feel you need to. One of my favorite things we've watched in years is Obi-Wan, six episodes. Yeah. Um, and so it's like eight, yeah. you could definitely do, especially because. If we're talking, you know, 
in terms of comparing uh, the time frames of each arc, season one, we had to get them from girls to women to mothers to all this stuff. You, you cut out a lot of that that groundwork, especially, you know, the reign of Viserys had to be a huge part of it. Um, this, the battle on the Stepstones. We're here at war. The conflict is laid. The factions are solidified. Maybe yeah. eight is going to require less setup. So, yeah, and there's apparently a story in the in the reporting of of a battle intended for season two was uh, maybe pushed to the yet uh, as of yet unordered season three. So it looks like they got a handle on the story, and they did look. They did such a good job with ten episodes. You mentioned it. They move fast, but you always said it, and I agreed with it. Of they move to where it needs to go. Yes, they zip through and they aged up and all those kind of things. And, you know, I, I could have had uh, absolutely had a, a season of of uh, the younger versions of the characters. Totally yeah. could have done that, but they didn't want to do that. They went this way. And I don't feel I personally don't feel even though I wanted could have taken more scenes and episodes. I don't feel cheated by what we got. They handled that well. So they have a handle on their story. I agree. I have complete confidence in Condal and this writing team. And of course, in George, who's very involved. Um, it was focused. It was character driven. It was intimate. And I think we all left season one feeling like this was one of our favorite seasons of the overall world of all nine seasons of the world mm -hmm. overall, including JT. It just felt really complete and really confident. And um, the postseason season. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, celebrations, the award shows, the talks, the interviews, this cast feels very engaged and I'm really excited about it and I'm not that worried. And um, my favorite part of this whole hubbub has been Emma Darcy posted on their Instagram story uh, coming out of retirement when, when the shooting started. So it's like, I like their attitude. I'll, I'll follow them. Still team boy. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Hard, hard, hard. Well, yeah, there's still some team green out there, which I can understand. But yeah, team black as well for me right now. We'll see how it plays out. So we'll keep you updated on that. Of course, summer 2004 is uh, what I would say is the rumored or thought to be released. I don't know how official that is. But I've seen it a few times in articles today. So we'll keep you updated there. Uh, speaking of, let's just go uh, to. Uh, well, I, you know, no, no, no. I, I do want to stick around with uh, Egg on the Conqueror. This uh, rumored variety reporting. That a Game of Thrones prequel about Aegon, Visenya, Rhaenys, uh, and their legendary conquest of Westeros is being, quote, quote, actively discussed at HBO or Max Central. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that the sources claim that this would be, could be, possibly be, begin with a, a, a feature, a motion picture. Uh, I don't know if that means we actually go to the theater or do you, you just uh, watch it at home. Maybe right. probably both. Uh, and that would lead into a series. So I'll start here. Uh, the the Aegon's Conquest has long been thought of, ooh, wouldn't that be a good series? And it didn't seem like that was ever really on the table when the, the world started to I I expand. Uh, but um, I, I was also familiar with it. It made sense to me that you wouldn't explore it. But I, 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 I don't know. I, I, having seen House of the Dragon, I'm now actually thirsty to go back to Aegon's Conquest. Too. I am too. When this news broke, we were talking about it a little bit in London. And I think that what I was talking about it with Nikki actually. And what we agreed on was that mm -hmm. this makes this is the a meeting of business sense and creative sense, where a lot of what worked about season one of House of the Dragon, I think for TV only people, for casual viewers, for people that like GOT in the way my mom likes GOT, it was right. oh, this place the Iron Throne, this sort of like the iconography really helped people settle back in. And I think that now you can do that again with House of the Dragon as the foundation. So it's like by the end of this season, we've had great emphasis on Balerion Skull. We've had great emphasis on the now show canon prophecy on the blade of the Song of Ice right. and Fire. We've right. had now Aegon the yeah. the the illegitimate the Aegon the the My Chemical Romance has <laughs> his crown has his sword so they've created those props like we're establishing a lot of elements that go back to him so if we go back to this this legendary figure to these siblings to these sibling spouses and we tell the story yeah. you you have the ability to say like oh and that crown that Otto gave him that he said he has the conqueror's crown he has the conqueror's name he has the conqueror's sword imagine putting that over a trailer or something and then mm -hmm. the big selling point yeah we've shown you that skull now 
in two shows. Now you're going to finally yeah. see Valerian. Now you're going to see it. Now you, you see, you're actually getting me even more excited for this. And interesting. Yeah. I think, you know, the, the, the first series, uh, GOT is going to be the entry point for most people, but you're not wrong. It's not quite like a star Wars generational shift but we mm -hmm. you and i those people we talk to people uh, i think our yeah. buddy maddie gunner where house of the dragon was kind of his first experience i yeah. i skipped i didn't see all of gt so the fact that you could actually it honestly build off of house of the dragon in a way yes it ties to got it's always going to tie to the original series but yeah that's kind of fun exciting and actually see the things there i just wondering like again varieties uh, saying that the the sources claim that folks at hbo are particularly keen I, that could be part of it too of just like well that was fun let's let's maybe tell more and, and use that use that same uh crowd you use uh, that skull but put something on put some skin on it let's see that dragon fly around yeah absolutely yeah. and then tying in with the idea of a feature too you gotta wonder you know for them there's a lot of franchises that have a presence in both star wars of course is one of these yeah uh, Star Trek is one of these. Star Trek just the other day announced a film that's going to be spinning out of the Discovery stuff, the Section 31 movie with Michelle Yeoh, Academy Award winner Michelle Yeoh. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, Marvel is one of these. Everybody's got this. It's a, it's a content war, so that's got to be mo a motivational factor, too. They had some success in the past with episodes in IMAX. Um, I know yeah. that they did like watches on the wall on IMAX and things like that. And then I think maybe, maybe the season six finale, I can't remember. Um, but I, I feel like this makes a lot of sense. Like, you know, you could, you know, do the 40 day, whatever release window 45 that some of them do, then yeah. throw it on max. Um, but if you did like, you know, uh, Aegon's conquest, if you did like game of Thrones, colon Aegon's conquest in theaters with, yeah. you know, some, with, with an actor that people are really excited about that also gives you the money to do things that now that now that the show dragons aren't impressive they have come so far and well, and, well, and we yeah. all were shock and awe at what vagar did uh to poor luceris um, yeah. at the end so it's like but that amplified up to get to see epic moments like the forging of the throne um the melting of the swords dorn refusing to break yeah, things like that yeah. so that it feels really is it's like it's good business you know it's the opposite of what i mean star wars just announced that they're building toward a movie this one can go the opposite way yeah no i i think uh that on uh, seeing that sort of the big screen and whatever they I'm, I'm just curious if it starts with a movie you're not necessarily getting the conquest you, you might get at the doom of larry you might be going back 100 years yeah. uh, with the targaryens uh getting a uh, you know getting a little hint a little prophecy a little dream to get on out of there uh, could be interesting, but uh, it would definitely be epic. Uh, and part of this, you know, again, this is all under the may and might uh, file folder there. And and uh, Watchers on the Wall uh, reminds us that as well. And they're, and they're reporting on it here. Uh, this was uh, their writer, uh, Petra, that uh, was the one covering this story. And and, um, uh, and and it was pointed out in the article that, you know, hey, we're still, even though there's been uh, what you were talking about earlier at, at Warner Brothers HBO and a lot of contraction of, of shows, cancellation of shows and, uh, contractions of budgets on shows, all that kind of stuff. You know, we still got, we still got in some form or another, 10,000 ships, nine voyages, the Duncan egg adaptation we're going to talk about here. And not for nothing, the Jon Snow sequel at this house of the dragon. Uh, they're still pretty confident. It seems yeah. in this world as they should be. Yeah, absolutely. This one didn't really make much of a news wave. Cause it wasn't really news, but Kit Harrington a couple weeks ago was on a red carpet and somebody asked about the Jon Snow project and they misspoke and mm -hmm. said prequel. And then Kit was like, uh, I think you mean sequel. Also, I can't say anything about it. Like he like it, it's like, let, let's get this straight. Remember, I, 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 I as a young character, but also uh, you're not going to be any answers. But, <laughs> you know, yeah, we know that's in the works. So. I do want the Jon Snow prequel where it's just uh, <laughs> a, a baby being taken back by by Edder. Did we just you know we could see Catelyn just, upset? Let's just do a that. kid just being yeah shaded by a grown woman for <laughs> twenty years. Yeah, <laughs> Michelle Farley uh, and and uh, Sean being back. Let's do it. Let's do it. That'd oh, be great. D yeah, you, and you, uh, I, mean, I mean, yes, we have a Game of Thrones podcast here. We are fans. Like I always say, this isn't just content to me. This is a world I love playing around in. Still waiting for George in the books, all that good stuff. But uh, do you have, you look at this, 
is, is there any percentage that's like, ooh, this is too much. Let's get just make sure we're doing things, or is it just open open arms and excitement? Uh, it's it's pretty much open arms. I'm very much of the mind of there are certain things in my fandom life that I want to be precious. Star Wars movies is one of those. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of television, I you know, if you space them out, I'm very much of the mind of what Star Trek doing right now. I love Star Trek has four ongoing television things and maybe five that are mm -hmm. all totally different that all hit at different times of the year that cross mm -hmm. over in funny ways. And it's like, why not? Like it, they, they can satisfy different things, which is what we're going to talk about with, with hedge Knight is like that, that, literally by sheer virtue of the material can't be like house of the dragon um yeah. so i guess you know as long as the pitches are different and the, and the points are different i'm always going to be here for it now if they immediately after house of the dragon were like we're going to tell another story of another family of intrigue and it's going to be house of the blank like that might get old after a while but they're not sure. doing that so yeah no i think i bring up the question because there's a percentage of me that sees news stories and gets excited and then i get that um pre-defensive oh some people aren't gonna like this vibe almost like mm -hmm. i robbed my own fun no one's actually robbing fun away but i'm i'm just worried about discourse or twitter or even to my own friends going oh too much we, we even get that sometimes in star wars uh too much and 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 i think there can be a too much point uh, and, and there can be a, like you said, the content wars and the streaming wars and all that stuff we're in and so many franchises and Star Trek's doing a great job right now. Uh, Star Trek's probably stronger than maybe it's been in, in, in decades even, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just in terms of its fan base being ignited. So why not? And and if you're sitting around and you're a blustery CEO in a, in a high tower going, Burr, what are we going to do? You got these dragons. And, again, and I think the way season one of house of dragon played out the way it looked the way it felt um even some of the accolades uh, some of the reception it definitely wasn't the game of thrones season three to four fever pitch i don't know if it ever mm. will be again but you don't need it to be that you don't need no. any of these projects to be that you just need to, need to engage with those fans and bring in those casuals like your mom exactly and, my, and that that's the thing is that like do you think my mom cares about the about the, about the time period or the the no. difference or egg on who like she got through house of the dragon probably can't name anyone um mm -hmm. she's still working on the got names but she loved it she loved the experience of watching it um yeah. and and sometimes that matters to people um outside of our bubble which we always have to try to remind ourselves people are going to see another thing and they're going to hear Raman Jawadi's theme and they're going to be like, I'm back, you know, and they're not going to worry about the steps it took to, yeah. to get there. Um, yeah. And that's a hard thing to accept as nerds, but yeah. yeah. What, what a great place to be in. What a great place <laughs> to be in there. Well, uh, we'll uh, talk about here, our, our final story to catch up on. And that is, uh, something that had been i remember was rumored at one point uh we can't mm -hmm. wait to get uh rachel cushing uh levine back on the show here when schedules align this is one of her favorite things it is the dunk and egg adaptation mm -hmm. uh taking from the three novellas the, the hedge knight uh the knight of the seven kingdoms series whatever you want to call it you're right it's it's a long day and there's a lot of uh, semicolons that can be placed here uh this is uh, a, a a property um that is uh long been I mean, an adaptation of it has, has long been uh, thirsted for, uh, yeah. I think. I think there's been a desire for it. Uh, I have, uh, uh, it's been a while since I've read them. Um, 2014, 2015 range, I picked them up there and uh, right. love them. And they're great. They're absolutely great. Uh, I think it's perfect for a series. Uh, and 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 now we look uh, we look at this, we got to straight to series, man. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's what you want in the business, uh, straight to series. Yeah, it's, it has been long gestating. I mean, if I remember correctly, way before you and I even worked together, like regularly, regularly, when I would still pop in and guest, this is one of the first things we talked about, like Dunkin' Egg series, question mark. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and now here it is not called that. Uh, no disrespect to Dunkin' the Tall mm -hmm. and an egg, but I don't think Dunkin' Egg is a title that maybe would move uh, <laughs> like House of the Dragon, you know, kind of. So, Game of Thrones, Dunkin' Egg, what? <laughs> yeah, Dunkin' yeah, Egg, right. Night of the like, Seven Kingdoms. Night of the Seven Kingdoms is the sub, it's the heading, and then it's subtitled The Hedge Knight, right? Is that the whole yeah. thing? 
So it's yeah, Game yeah. of Thrones, A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, The Hedge Knight. It's it's a lot. Um, I respect it. It's very it's very yeah. very very over the top, and I do respect it. Um, yeah. Could it have just been Game of Thrones, The Hedge Knight? Yes, I do think so. But if the point is to make A Night of the Seven Kingdoms a banner, I yeah. like that because then it could be oh, A yeah. Night of the Seven Kingdoms. Uh, the Morning Star, the, the Night of the yeah. Seven Kingdoms, Barrist and the Bold. Like, that Ooh, could be really yeah. cool. I like that. I like that. Uh, hey, you give me some more uh, brand of Tarth. If we're going to go to Jon Snow sequel t- uh, territory, give me a short uh, ex- you know, exclusive series there on Brand mm-hmm. of Tarth. Six, six, I do have months. to point out before anyone corrects me in the comments, I said Morning Star. I meant Sword of the Morning. Sword Morning of the Star morning. is what Kristen Cole wields, and I hate Kristen Cole. He should yeah. not get his own he season. Should not get it. <laughs> reading the uh hbo or hbo max or you know whatever you want to call them press release just to make it official here which is exciting that this is not something that is you know uh in the rumor mill or in scoop right. mill. It, it, it's hbo saying it a century before the events of game of thrones two unlikely heroes wandered westeros a young naive but courageous knight sir duncan the tall and his diminutive squire egg set in an age when the targaryen line still holds their throne the memory of the last dragon has not yet passed from living memory. Great destinies, powerful foes, and dangerous exploits all await those improbable and incomparable friends. That that's you know, log lines are tough. I got to tell you, as as, as mm-hmm. a writer in the years past, like you, you can write a hundred page script, but a log line will kill you. It just it's the hardest thing to put together. It will be written and executive produced by George R. R. Martin and Ira Parker with Vince uh, Gerardis and Ryan Condal uh, on board as an executive producer there, which makes a lot of sense. He's um, I don't want to say this. I say this carefully, uh, Alden. He might be a little bit of the Filoni in this universe. Oh, see, you went to a different. I thought you were going to say the Fihi, which might even might be a more dangerous word than even the Filoni mm-hmm. these days. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. I mean, when this was first floated and started development, there was no Condal. Now you yeah. see Condal has a massive hit and keeps the brand going, and suddenly mm-hmm. there's Condal. Um, yeah. He, I think George really <laughs> likes him. I yeah. think it makes a lot of sense. His Sounds company like is so. called Bastard Sword. Like, yeah, I think that he is he's that guy. He's he's kind of got a protege feel in, in a looser way. Um, yeah. Really excited about it. I mean, I've said this a bunch of times every time the shows come up and I'll say it again. Game of Thrones is massive. It's it's different continents. It's different regions. It's different seasons mm-hmm. and tones and feels and aesthetics. House of the Dragon is more intimate but it's by the standard of the Targaryens. So it's still massive. Yeah. This I think is not tonally or in terms of plot, but in terms of scale Mandalorian for yeah. this world, it's you know two guys traversing the land on horseback and on foot, different quests, being able mm-hmm. to flesh out novellas. It's a loose amount of source material. Um, I feel like this is like for people that are like, oh, I really, I really like that world, but I just, I just can't get into I can't get a hold of all the characters. This is two. And I think that's really going to be helpful. Yeah, no, I, I really like what you're saying there. I like this idea. Again, I, I've read them and and, and they're, they're, they are smaller, even though it's Targaryens and a lot's at stake. Uh, it's a little less of the world is burning and, and the world's at stake. It, it, it's smaller scale like, indeed. And, and I think that opens up. There's a spirit too that could be fun. Um, it's it's not quite Aryan. And the hound ro- roaming around, but it, it could be, um, you know, and it goes, it goes to big spots and it goes to epic spots. So uh, I'm excited. And and, and on, the, on the condol of it all, that I think it's a good point that you said that this was once he's on, once he comes on board, uh, clearly he and George have, have hit it off. Uh, George is, I think, always nice and respectful of Benioff and Weiss uh, to a degree, that, at least publicly. And, and he obviously had confidence in them to get this, you know, to give him uh, the, the blessing early on, but it just kind of seems based on interviews for house, of the dragon that he and Condal have hit it off that they just, mm-hmm. he, he, it is, it, it's, it's another George. That's why I mentioned the Filoni thing. It's, it, it's Lucas and Filoni to a degree. I don't know the inner workings of it there. I don't want to, I don't, I don't love putting Filoni on a pedestal. I don't like putting anyone mm-hmm. up on a pedestal, but, but Ryan seems to get, it seems to get the world. George has said that, Many times. And you can, if you want to take that as shade towards Benny Alpha Weiss, do it. Run with that. Take it. I'm not saying it in that way. Um, so that excites me even more that George is like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. Let's expand this world. And he can kind of help with all that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And and to create the further um, shared aesthetic across the three shows and, and different sort mm-hmm. of um, different elements, like, you know, it, 
it's hard to see like who, what would the kinetic tissue would be this far out. But we know that that Maester Aemon, a young Aemon, will probably be a character in this show. It stands to reason yeah, with yeah, Egg. Totally, yeah. So it's like that's a connection there. And it's like, will they deliver something here that enhances his scenes with John later when he talks about his brother Egg and things mm -hmm. like that? Like it's those types of things that I think Condal will pay attention to. Not that we need everything to enhance everything else. Um, the, no. tell an intimate story but it, those types of things are are important and Condal already thought about those kinds of things you could tell with House of the Dragon he would say okay what did Dan and Dave do how is yeah. mine going to be different but the same and build yeah. and that's an important way to think about it still one of the, the, the best things they did with that series and Sapochnik had a lot to do with that as well of, of, mm -hmm. of, of what can we take and what we, can we do differently both behind the camera in the writer's room in casting but also in story uh, yeah, so so I'm excited about that. Yeah, you know, you, you get the sense. I don't know Ryan Condal as well as say like a Benioff and Weiss because there's now dec uh, over a decade of interviews. Uh, even you and I in Star Wars and Dave Filoni, where there's just a lot of interviews. I don't know know Condal to that degree as a fan, but it just seems like he's up late at night thinking about this stuff, thinking about mm -hmm. this, and it is aware of oh yeah, is, is Duncan is Sir Duncan the Tall? Is, is he related to Brianna Tarth? Are we gonna get a, get an answer to that? Are we gonna play with that at all? Like. He, you know he's up scribbling on notepads and I, and I love that it makes me confident absolutely i mean this is the guy that i already mentioned it but shook the entire both book and show fandom by incorporating the ice and fire prophecy in the way that he did and by giving mm -hmm. the targaryens that mm -hmm. built-in momentum hundreds of years out all the way toward the end of game of thrones season eight so yeah. is there a move here that they want to make um that will sort of inspire sort of similar um conversations or engagement uh there are things that i have the utmost confidence in i know whoever they the cast is going to be wonderful across both shows the actors have just been phenomenal um and i'm excited to see how this flushes out the world in ways that we haven't seen because that's something that i think we missed in house of the dragon we loved it it's not a knock against it but we missed um being on the road we missed comedy totally. we missed some of the uh totally. the one-off characters and things like that yeah and that's that's in interesting a uh, great discussion point to, to add in here on the fly yeah that was it's one of my uh one of my, i don't even want to call it a critique it's just one of the things about house of the dragon that uh that i just it's no, i noticed and it's 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 something that stands out to me is a little lack of not just the comedy but a little more joint spirit and it seems as condal's already addressed that and so season two might be a little different but it, it, i don't need to worry about it as much if i know you know uh, duck and egg are going to be roaming the land in another series and i gotta imagine there might be a different kind of spirit different kind of energy and, and egg on egg on the conqueror i'm sure he was a funny guy seems you know not dour and completely <laughs> serious uh so that'd be good but it's fun and then you got me thinking about this too um as this land expands and the world is is building yeah i, I house of the dragon I'll say it like I want I'd take a swing up to the Night's Watch. I want to check on on those boys. And what are they doing up there? Uh, it's just because I love the world so much as as more ideas, the, you know, 10,000 ships and, you know, nine voyages, all the stuff that we have. We have a chance to go to other parts of the world and move not just beyond Westeros, but more importantly, I think beyond some of the, the houses we're super familiar with. I think right now it makes sense to have Targaryens. Why you wouldn't? Why wouldn't you? They're pretty dominant starks and baratheons and all these names we're familiar with um well, there's a lot a lot of parts of star wars fandoms and i'm sure star trek fandoms but a lot of people who hey we love these worlds but give us something new mm -hmm. uh as you look out as at, at this world the the, the et uh, show that was uh, out there floating around animated i believe i don't know the status of that right now i can't remember still foggy from london um <laughs> when do you think when do you think it's a good time if at all to go to a Game of Thrones universe show that might just be Bravos or you know the Golden Company, and 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 the audience would be in completely unfamiliar territory. Maybe it's kind of familiar. Do you think they, they'll, they'll ever be a right time to do that? I think that they're the right time is a hard question to pin down. I think for me, it's always it could be any time. You just need the right link. Because I'm not someone of the mind that, like, you hear it all the time with Star Wars. I mean, you know, you've yeah. been in this game even longer than I have in Star Wars. I mean, all the time. Just give me something completely fresh and new. It's like, well, dude, we can't, man. We can't. There's always going to be a lightsaber, a planet, a ship, a something that somebody, because it's not just about us. It's about yeah. the children. It's about 
casual fans. It's which is not a pejorative. It's just casual fans. Um, it, it you want them to be like, oh, okay. So could we do like the all bravos or go all the way to a shy or something like that? Absolutely. Um, yeah. But there's gonna be some Westerosi night or some. Yeah, ship or so, something that is going to be like your eyes in that's like hey we're going over here like that yeah. people forget i think that that's why like one of our favorites and i know one of your top guys jora was so important for the so storyline in game of thrones is because he could be there to not just fill danny in but to remind us this is one show you're, I'm going to say things like king robert i'm going to say things like your father i'm going to say things about about the world you you yeah. need that, and I so I don't think we'll ever be. Here's a yeah. here's eight new Bravosi characters you've never heard of, ground up, with nothing else. I don't think we'll ever do that. I, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. There there could be a time, could be interesting. It's but it's always going to be, even if you go to a shy, someone's going to mention Westeros, right? And and mm -hmm. and yeah, I do, and I I get those those fans that call for that even in Star Wars. But I always you know I always I always make the joke. It's like, do you want to? You want to watch Godfather Four, but it's the story of the waiter in the restaurant, or do you want to yeah. watch the story there? Because, like, and let's say we go to a shy, like, for as many people that are like, "Oh, a shy, it's all new." There's going to be just as much of a very valid call for, "Ooh, we get to see the red priestesses." It's going like, to be another. It's going to be another red woman. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, and that's and that's like, yeah, duh, because it's yeah. the the part of what made the world so rich was the fact that it all influenced everything else. You liked hearing robert baratheon be afraid of the dothraki mm -hmm. and you liked hearing those conversations um of barristan even though they were in essos talking about rhaegar like that's what made it feel like this big sweeping thing to me anyway um yeah that's that's what makes characters like oberyn and corliss cool is because they bring stories of these other places but mm -hmm. they still had to go to them to have those yeah. adventures yeah, no, it's great. I, they could get there. I, I love, I love what you're saying, and just you know, uh, I guess maybe that two percent of uh, pre-defensive thing, where like, I gotta imagine there's some folks who though were like, ah, more dragons again, more Targaryens again, uh, and maybe one one day we'll we'll expand beyond that. And something like Duncan Egg, even though it's very much set in the Targaryen house, there, uh, it, it could it, it would allow you to travel back out, and I'm excited about that potentially happening. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. We've caught up. That's pretty much all the news. There might be little tidbits there. Uh, we'll be back up and running. Don't you worry. Uh, I'm excited to get Rachel back on. We'll get Rachel back on here real soon uh, to uh, kind of highlight some things that uh, she would want to see in a Dunkin' Egg series. Uh, I know she's a big fan of that as well. So, uh, yeah, Alden, I think that's it. I, th I think we're caught up. It's it's Speaking of unfamiliar territory, broadcasting a Cashly Talk is a little unfamiliar for me. It's, it's good to be back home. I know, and we did a casually talk in, in, a, in a reasonable amount of time, and we just we just hit everything. Like we're on fire, we're back. You're witnessing us realize in real time that that we got this. Uh, yeah, it's it's again, it's never not going to be weird to have to do this long walk toward season two. Uh, but yeah. we forget there will be probably by San Diego a trailer um, or at least a teaser um so it's we're not going to be without um yeah. for the rest of this and uh we'll have other adventures along the way i'm sure yeah and there's that uh yeah the whole lord of the rings world too that middle yeah. world we'll talk about as well uh thank you as all uh always alden and for those who are listening thanks for uh, the patience uh thanks for the dedication thanks for support if you're watching on uh, the youtube side and you want to support the channel uh you can uh, leave super thanks uh donate directly to, to the uh um uh, morning drive media which uh, is my company that makes this all possible if you if you want to uh, help us grow and expand and be able to put more time to it that's one way to do it but also i say the best way to support listen like share tell people about it so we can uh, be here more and more for you uh alden uh you're back up and running with octo radio as well so tell them where to find mm -hmm. you there the links are below yeah you can find me personally at that alden diaz twitter instagram hive TikTok, all those places octa radio star wars podcast uh is ongoing we've been covering all of mandalorian so that is all up there for you to cover season three the interviews are back up and running uh, doing a lot of higher public author interviews just had lydia kang on um, so if you're a higher public fan if you're a fan of this channel and you're like where do i start in star wars 
that's a conversation to have for sure. It hit me up about higher public, probably the most high fantasy of star Wars thus far. Um, and yeah, everywhere else, um, just it's all over Twitter. We'll talk. It's a big internet <laughs> and everybody lost their badges today. It's pandemonium. Uh, hey. and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens indeed. I never had one, so I didn't lose nothing. I'm right back at the bottom where I always was. <laughs> you so dragged happened. everyone down with you now. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me. Uh, down, links down below if you're watching on YouTube on the podcast side. My website, catnapsack.com. Uh, check out my music show, Pop Rock and Radio. My ASMR channel, Sports Card ASMR. A lot of things going on. Of course, your Star Wars stuff. Uh, go to Force Center for me. All right, my friends. That is it. We'll see you next time here on Casterly Talk. Mm -hmm.